Um, it's great to be in a room with people. I've missed this. I know y'all have been able to gather a couple of times already this semester, but um, that's been the thing this last year that's been missing for me is that connection with people. And I really miss seeing people without masks on. Um, so I'm looking forward to the, the day that we get to take these things off and actually see each other's faces and smiles. Um, but anyway, really, really glad to be here. Um, tonight, um, I have with me, uh, my family is here. So my husband, Chris, is here, and he graduated from Auburn in 1991 with a degree in finance. Um, and then also our two sons, Andrew and Ben, are also with me. Andrew, yeah, is finishing up his freshman year uh, here at Auburn, and his brother, Ben, will be joining him in the fall. So we are 100% an all Auburn family. Um, also with us tonight are my husband's parents, Joel and Bonna Cornett, and it means so much to me that both of y'all are here um, in support. Okay, so uh, finally, before I start my speech, I would also like to recognize um, a friend and colleague of mine um, who was named the, f the final lecture award winner last year and like all things in 2020 that did not happen so mr. Bob Cochran and his wife Karen are here tonight in the back Bob you want to stand up <laughs> Bob teaches uh, in the School of Accountancy along with me, and, and I know that both the School of Accountancy and the Harvard College of Business is probably pretty proud um, to have two award winners um, two years in a row that are here. But um, Bob does a great job, and if you haven't taken business law from him, you need to do so, okay? My recommendation. Okay, as I was thinking tonight about what in the world I was gonna talk about, um, spent a, quite a bit of time thinking about it, and what I kept returning to was this idea that, or the sense that I have, that I never in all my years of teaching have seen the student body under a tr the tremendous amount of pressure and stress and anxiety than what we have right now. Um, it's been a hard year, right? Uh, being in school and the, the academic work in the middle of a pandemic is very hard. Um, it's hard not just on students, but it's hard on teachers too. But I think um, in light of where we are this year, I felt like the best thing to do would be to offer some hope and encouragement and maybe um, just maybe a little bit of encouragement to finish the semester strong. So that's what I hope to do uh, tonight. Um, so I teach accounting, not one of the most favorite subjects for people you know, think about uh, or to want to take, but I like it. Um, and accounting, I get really excited about accounting. And um, don't worry, I'm not gonna bore you and make this about accounting tonight. But I wanted to give you a little bit of a sense of why it is that I love accounting so much. And I think it is because accounting really appreciates truth and puts a value, a premium on truth, that truth is important. In fact, everything that we do in financial accounting is all aimed at making sure we capture exactly the, the realistic thing, the, a faithful representative of, of the actions or activities of a company for a time period, so that those financial statements really represent a body of truth that tell the story about what happened during that time period. And so there's this connection of truthful information to usefulness that I think is really key there. In other words, if you aren't dealing with true information, it's really hard to make good decisions, okay? And that's really what I wanna talk about tonight, um, is how, tr how important truth is in that it influences our perspective in the way that we see the world, in the way that we see each other, and the way that we see ourselves. So, very quickly, I'm gonna talk about two truths, and neither of these truths are gonna be foreign to you. You will have heard them before. But I think it's important um, to stop and ponder these truths and think about them, and then take a look at what that means for us moving forward. Okay, so the first truth that I have, uh, the world is not perfect. 
Thank you, Captain Obvious, right? Um, we live in an imperfect world, and things are not the way that they're supposed to be. And this has almost universal agreement among all peoples from all times, from all cultures, that there's something broken about the world that isn't quite right, and we want to do what we can to fix it. Right? And the whole history of, of human effort has been aimed toward that end of making the world a better place. And that's a good thing. That's a real good thing. Um, as we think about the imperfections in the world, we don't have to go far to find proof about the things that are wrong because even when we're not in the middle of a pandemic, we still have things like pain and sickness and death and injustice and oppression all around us that definitely confirm the fact that this world is not the way it's supposed to be. So that's the first point. The second point is that human life has ultimate meaning and value. And I think on some level, all of us say, yes, humans are good and they're worth a lot. And if we want to use the MasterCard uh, advertisement, they're priceless, right? The value of a human life is priceless. I think sometimes we fail maybe to apply that to ourselves and to the people around us. So a lot of this is coming from my own personal belief in a creator God that made man in his image and called him the crown of creation. And I know not everybody buys into that, but even if you don't, if you're sitting here tonight and you don't buy into that, there's still something special, something attractive, something mean meaningful about seeing human life is really precious. So if you are making a complete train wreck, out of your studies this semester. This is not a statement about your value or worth as a person. That's the first thing. Now, I know we live in an academic environment and grades do need to be assigned. And those grades are not an assessment of your value. They're just an assessment of the things that you've learned in your courses. So it is not the worst thing in the world, I might get in trouble for saying this, but it's not the worst thing in the world for you to fail an exam or to even fail a course. It doesn't take away your personal, individual value. And I can tell you from all the conversations that I've had with Auburn faculty over the last year, there's two things that concern faculty as a group, and they're both about students and their well-being. The first one is that we worry for safety, right? We want our students to be safe. We want us to be safe too, but we want our students, we want our community to be safe. And the second thing is that your faculty really do care about you and your well-being at Auburn. Auburn's a special place. It, it really is. And I know it may not always seem like your faculty care about you, especially if you inter interact with them too much by email, right? You might get some pushback or be like, I'm not sure that they think I'm a very valuable person. But I can tell you that deep down your faculty at Auburn care about you. And, I've, and I want you to hear that. So your performance this semester is not a measure of who you are or your worth. And that's important to remember. I mean, surely if we can get this down for ourselves, what that means for us is that when we do fail, the way that we talk to ourselves about that failure or about missing the mark is a little bit different, right? If our, if our identity is in the fact that we belong in this category called human and that's what makes us important and valuable, then when we fail, we have permission to give ourselves a little bit of mercy and grace, right? Um, that we have permission to forgive ourselves because humans make mistakes. I don't know about you, I make a lot of them. Right? So seeing our ultimate worth and our humanness, I think, is really important, not just in the way that we see ourselves, but it's also in the way that we interact with other people. And this is the one that tends to be a little bit harder, maybe for me, maybe for you. 
If I'm going to err on the side of being gracious and merciful, it's probably going to be to myself. I may not have as easy of a time applying that to the irritating individual who I don't like or who really drives me bananas, right? And I, th I think this past year, what we've seen play out, we live in a divided culture, <laughs> right? Everything is polarized. There's a line down the middle of every issue and you have to be on it, right? And I think what we have from this past year is a lot of examples in our society of humans behaving badly, <laughs> not being kind to one another, right? There's a way to value a person and their life and yet still hold a different opinion and treat them with dignity and respect. And I think that's where we need to be. That's where I want to encourage y'all to be. I think if we can do that, it can really go back to point one and do something about the world not being perfect. I think if we can actually grasp the value of our humanness and then be able to, to value other people around us, I think it changes the way we talk to one another. And I think that that could be really neat. I'd love to see that take hold and happen here at Auburn. Um, I did not attend Auburn, but I feel like I did. I feel like I'm part of the Auburn family. Two favorite things about Auburn are the Auburn family and the Auburn Creed. I love the Auburn Creed. I feel like the creed really does embody this business of affirming the individual and loving your neighbor. Um, and so tonight I want to leave you with one last quote, my favorite line from the creed. Um, I believe in my country because it's a land of freedom and because it's my own home and that I can best serve my country by doing justly, loving mercy and walking humbly with my God. Y'all, if we can do that, it's going to make the world a better place. Thank you.